Y'all give God a hand clap of praise this morning. What a joy and what a privilege it is to be here this morning to stand before you all and to see each and every one of you. I thank and I praise my Lord and my Savior for your presence here this morning. It's not an accident that you're here today. God so ordained that you would be here and you're here. And I praise God for all of you and your presence this morning. We um, will be blessed today if the Lord says the same to go back to the creek. Um, I'll just go on and say it now. If you have not received your salvation, um, today is a good day. Uh, Jesus gave his life on Calvary for every one of us that we might have a right to eternal life. Time is winding down. And you want to make sure that you've got your life together before it comes time for you to leave this world. You want to make sure that you're going in the right direction. Amen. Because tomorrow's just not promised. Not to any of us. I, I, a classmate of mine lost his son, 33 years old. I, <laughs> life can be difficult. We expect to bury our parents. But we really don't expect to bury our children. But I got news for you. It's not about what we think. But it's about what God knows. And he knows you. But the important thing is to get to know him. This morning, if you have your Bibles, if you would turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5. We're, we're still in Dealing with the Sermon on the Mount. And um, <clears throat> if you go to Matthew chapter 5, for some of you all, that it's going to be written in red because Jesus said it. Um, verse 14 is where we're at. Amen. Again, I heard all the uh, birthday wishes. Happy birthday to everyone. Um, I'm, I, I'm glad you got another year older. Amen. Now, if you found it, if you would, please stand for the reading of God's word. I'll be reading from the New International Version. Amen. Amen. And it reads as followed. As follows. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a, on a stand, on a stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your father in heaven. Pray with me. Father God, we give thanks to you that you continue to let us shine. In this dark world. Father we know that. You have purpose for us. Because that's why we're here today. We're praying Father God. That your will will continue to be done. In spite of us. And because of your goodness. I thank you right now. In advance. For what you're going to do. And how you're going to do it. I give you the glory. The praise and the honor. The grass withereth And the flowers fade away. But the word of the living God shall live forever. Amen. You may be seated. Some of you all will think this topic is kind of, well, what's he doing now? But I want you to understand something. I grew up and worked uh, for my father's business. 
And as I worked for his business, as time evolved and, and time went on, we finally got into cordless tools. Amen. Battery operated tools. The key to using a battery operated tool is you've got to charge it up. So this morning, I, I, I want to talk to you about keeping your batteries charged. You see, my dad would get frustrated with us because at the end of the day, we would leave and not put our batteries on charge. The problem is the next morning when we got ready to go to work, the, 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 the equipment would work, but it would only work for a short time. Amen. Because the battery wasn't fully charged. It was run down. It, 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 it did not have enough in it to sustain it for the entirety of the day. And, and my brothers and sisters, I just want to say to you this morning, in too many cases, we as the children of God have got run down batteries. We, 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 we. We run hard all week long. <laughs> and if we're not careful, we'll be so tired on Sunday morning, we'll lay in and stay in. We run so hard through the week that if you're not careful, you won't pray before you lay down, you'll go to sleep. And, 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 and just leave your life in God's hands, hoping and praying that he'll, he'll sustain you and keep you through the night because we're too tired to pray. Not knowing, understanding and comprehending within ourselves that the power that we need is actually in the prayer that we utter to him. The power that we need is actually in getting up and showing our faithfulness to him and making our way out to the house of worship so that we can get to Sunday school and be empowered again in order to move forward. That's how it's done. I don't work on my own because I'm no good by myself. Okay, y'all don't believe me. Let me show you something. The Lord blessed us to purchase a scissor lift. Uh, for many of you all that, that have never been straight up in the air and drove around like you just don't care uh, way up in the air. Uh, this is what we do with scissor lifts and we get up there and we hang light fixtures and, and we do all these wonderful things. But one of the tragedies of a scissor lift is if you're up in the air and the batteries have not been charged, if it goes down and you're in midair, it's not a lot of fun. It just ain't. Are oh, you laughing? Because you know. <laughs> you have to charge the. Uh, th that's all I'm trying to say this morning. That's all I'm trying to get at. If, 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 if you will take the time and charge up. You can accomplish the task that you have before you. Now, how many of you all have, have left out of the house and, and gone out and, and when you got back home, uh, the lights were out and you, 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 you didn't know where the shortage was or where the problem was and you stumbled into the house trying to see with your cell phone to find your flashlight only to grab your flashlight and find out that the batteries are I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. It's just, it, 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 this is just common sense stuff, but it, 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 it gets us because if you don't charge up, if you don't take care of what you got, it don't work. What, what am I saying about that? That scissor lift has all these batteries inside of it. And if you, if, 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 if battery A charges, battery B charges, but it gets to battery C and it won't charge. Then battery D don't get what it needs. And then A and B are left to do all the work. 
The problem is too many of us are expecting somebody else to do the work for us. So there's a weak link in the battery system. So you can't go as high as you need to go. Your lift won't go high. Because your batteries are dead. Oh, glory to God this morning. Somebody knows what I'm talking about in here. Listen, listen, listen. This, this, this is a simple passage uh, taken from Jesus himself. And no, he may not have been on top of the mountain uh, with a scissor lift or with a flashlight, but he was with a bunch of people and he was with 12 disciples. And they needed to get charged up. He said... You've got to let your light shine. Okay. Well, what kind of light am I going to shine? It's certainly not my flashlight. Because it's dead. But the light that he wants to shine is the light that you received when Jesus came into your life, came into your heart. Then your light is able to shine so that people can see that there is a difference in you. The old you lived in the dark. Yeah. Because you were living in sin. Now. Most people you know don't sin in the daylight, do they? They wait till dark. Luther Vandross said it like this. He said, she creeps. But she's not doing it during the day. She's doing it at night when you can't tell who it is or what they're doing. I drove past a friend the other night. There were blue lights behind her and blue lights in front of her. She had had way too much to drink. I didn't know who she was. If I had, I would have stopped and prayed with her and told her everything would be all right. She got out of jail three o'clock that morning, so everything was still all right. The issue is. No matter where you are or the situation is, he's calling for us to let our light shine. In order for my light to shine, I've got to have it charged up. In order for me to charge it up, I've got to be found in his word. Remember, you can't present a problem without presenting a, a solution. The solution to the problem is I've got to put in what needs to be done in order to charge the batteries so that they will work better and my light will shine brighter. And when people come to me in a dark and dank situation, I'll be able to shine on them the light of Jesus Christ. Okay, listen to me, listen to me. Next is Jesus says, a city... You'll see it from far away because at night the lights will. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Now, where I live at, I can look over this way. I can see the lights shining from the city of Bowling Green. If I look back in this direction, I can see the lights of Franklin shining in this direction. I'm not in the city. I'm not even near the city. But I can still see the light shining. And, 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 and what I'm trying to say to you this morning is the shining of the light of the city in that time was because the city was setting up high. The city set up high so you could find it. Not only could you find it. But it was also a way for them to have defense against their oppressors. In other words, if you came and attacked the city, they would see you coming from far away because they were setting up high. The idea is, as Jesus was speaking, it represents also the church. If I want comfort, if I want help, if I want deliverance, I need to see the church shining so that I can get to it. Oh, he's talking about the building. No. 
<laughs> no, I ain't talking about the building. I'm talking about you and I. We're the church. People ought to be able to look to us for direction, for guidance, for understanding, and to see God's power working in our lives on a daily basis. Now, yo, I can't find a place where Jesus told us to keep his word a secret. I, I can't find a place. So, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking because the next verse says, if I light a candle and I put a bowl on top of the candle, you can't see the light. Who are you going to help if the, if the lights are out? Nobody. So you're not benefiting anybody by keeping your testimony, your words of faith, your encouragement, your Holy Ghost power. You're not helping anybody by keeping it to yourself. You've got to share what God has given you. And you've got to do it on a daily basis. Every day of your life. Somebody ought to know who you are and what you're about. You don't have to flaunt it. And we don't do it so that we'll get glorified. But we do it because we want to glorify the God that is in us. Amen. You've got to let your light shine. It's just that simple. What am I saying? Well, Jesus said, no, you take. The candle and you put it on a stand. And when you put the candle on the stand, it lights up the entire room. When you light up the entire room, then everyone else in the room can see the light. The same thing happens with you and me. When we are lighting and illuminating it not only helps us as individuals but it helps everybody else in the household as well somebody's light may not be shining as bright as yours but because you open up and you let your light shine you have y'all ever done this took one candle and then lit another candle off of it huh y'all ever done that now you can't do it with them battery operated ones it don't work like that. But, 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 but I'm talking about the one you, you strike a match, you know, and you light and the wax burns and, you know, gets on your fingers, burns your hand and stuff. You know what I'm talking about. But if you take another one and you put it to it, you can light it. Then the next person can light it. Then the next person can light it. Then the next person can light it. And before you know it, the whole house is lit. So we can't keep it hidden. Whatever God's given you. Whatever God has blessed you with, whatever God has entrusted you to do, to say, and how you should live. And, 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 and listen to me. Some people have, have said, well, I don't, I don't know if I ever heard God's voice. And I look at them and I say, well, have you ever read his word? The answer is, well, I have, but I didn't understand it. Then get you a Bible you can understand. And get in a church that will help you. And so that way you can grow. And you can be all that God wants you to be. The problem that we have is a lack of communication. You need to hear something to help you. But you can't hear it if you ain't here to get it. Uh, well, here we are. I got it on a stand. It's lighting up the whole room. Everything is shining now and everything looks well. What am I supposed to do with it? I'm supposed to get it to the next house so that it may shine in there as well. Listen, let me tell you something. We did a job once. I love lights. When I talk about lights, I get, I get excited. And the owner of the hotel said, I want my lobby. When I look up, I want the lights to be like the stars in the sky. And we're sitting there scratching our heads. Like We're used to doing things in uniformity. 
we put them in rows and we make sure we run a laser to make sure that they're all straight and they all look the same as you come in and as you go down through them we put them all like that and the man came in and he said that's not what I want well, then we moved them and angled them all and put them at an angle coming in. And he came in and he looked and he said, that's not what I want. We finally just scratched our head. And I said, fellas, do this. Put one here. Put one there. Put one there. Put one there. And we just put them up. And the man walked in and said, that's what I want. They look like the stars in the sky. Now y'all, you're wondering why I brought that up. Everywhere you go, you're not going to have another Christian with you. You're not. Sometimes when you go, you may be the only saved one in the house. But I got news for you. If you are by yourself, let your light shine anyway. Amen. That's the key to this whole thing. It, we're not called to all go at one time uh, to the same place. We're called to go. Period. We're, we're not, we're, we're, we, we, you know, we love to go out and all eat together. Why don't we do like Jesus sometimes? Go, go find some unsaved people and go eat with them. Shut your mouth. The issue is, you can't help unless you get to where the darkness is. Have any of you all ever been in a situation where the power went out like an ice storm and you can't find but one candle and you light it? And you go outside, and when you get outside, it's completely pitch black dark. But when you turn around and look, you can see that one little candle burning. You're saying, well, that ain't much light, but it's some light. You see, some light is better than no light. What, what am I saying? Some of you all in here are young in, 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 in your walk with Christ, but you still got a light. You, 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 you may not know everything. You may not understand and comprehend everything that the word of God said, but you've still got a light. And because you've got a light, even though it may not be as bright as somebody else, don't worry about that. You let your light shine. Because you're responsible for charging your battery. And because you're responsible for that, it don't matter how bright the next guy's is. You just take care of yours. Because at the end of the day, and at the end of this, this life, every one of us has got to answer for ourselves. And because we got to answer for ourselves, it's not about what your neighbor's light was doing. It's about what yours was. Let your light shine it'll make a difference that's the problem that we have too many of us believe that we can't make a difference too many of us believe that my little bit won't matter my little bit won't help well I got news for you if you tell your story and one believes it and comes to Christ. That's two. If you tell your story to somebody else. And the other one that, that came to Christ tells his story to somebody else. And they believe it. That's four. If you keep going before you know it. That little becomes a whole lot. What I'm trying to say to you this morning is never underestimate the power that God has put in you.
Never underestimate the ability that he has for you. The problem that we have is we don't want to step out on the faith that he has given us. We don't want to step out and tell others about he'll make a difference in your life if you'll only trust him. He turned me around. He delivered me. He made a way for me. He took me away from the alcohol, the drugs, the illicit sex. He took me away from all of those issues that I have in my life. And he put me on a new path that's it that's it he'll give you what you need he'll make a way for you and deliver you every day all you've got to do is trust him trust him I, I don't think I can do it, Lord. All you have to do is take the first step. And then he'll start multiplying your steps. He's got a real good multipl multiplication process. Y'all don't believe me? Give him 10% of everything that you got and watch him double your 90% to 180. <laughs> He'll do it. Give him your life and start witnessing for him and watch him transform everything else that's going on in your life. Give him yourself and watch him make your family act like they got some sense. Some of y'all laughing, but now your biggest obstacle is your family. The ones that you're dealing with the most, that you're having to go through with, that you're suffering with, that you're trying to figure out how you can help them, and they won't do right, they won't act right, they don't want to live right, and you're trying to get them back to where they need to be, and they won't move in the right direction, but you're doing it all yourself. You're exhausted, you're wore out, you're tired, you're mad, you're upset, and you've done everything but turn it over to God. And all of a sudden, it dawns on you. Oh, there's a big word again. Let me give it to him. Let me give him my job. I want a new job. But I just keep moping around complaining about the one I've got. Let, let, me, let, let me do this. Let me start praising him for where I'm at right now. <laughs> start praising him and even though I don't like my supervisor I don't like the place that I work I don't like the shift that I'm on I, but let me just start praising him and giving him the glory and guess what he'll do he'll change it all you got to do is ask ask he's able but you got to trust him. Ask in faith. And don't doubt him. You know. Our big, biggest obstacle. Is only 18 inches long. That's what we have up here. And that's where it gets to right here. The transformation that you need. Starts here. But it actually comes together right here. This morning. If you're still pondering. I need to get this right. The issue is you can't get this right. Without getting this right. Turn it over. To the Lord. He'll charge those dead batteries and he'll make you brand new but it won't happen until you submit to him you want things right in your life and you've been trying to figure it out how it's, how it's going to happen how it's going to work out why are you trying to figure out how it's going to work out when God's already got it 
I love this analogy and I use it so much. I know some of y'all are tired of hearing it, but I can only see the part of the train that comes around the bend. But the God that I serve sees the whole train. From the engine to the caboose. He sees it all. He knows every twist and every turn. And just about the time you're ready to give up and throw in the towel. That's when he can do his greatest work. Allow him to have control. What am I saying? Search me. Break me. And make me. And then send me. Send me to your work. Send me to do what you want done. Send me. That I may be a blessing to others. Send me. That I may help my family, my church, my job, my school. Send me. I can't do it by myself, but if you'll go with me, I can make a difference. And every one of you in here this morning has that capability to make a difference. Now, I'm, 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 Mrs. Lane's fixing to get on the piano. She's going to play something and somebody's going to sing. What I want you to do is to think about this. I'm, they're going to do all that so they're going to be busy. I'm done. But I'm going to go pray. Because I got crazy in my family and some of y'all got crazy in your family too. If you ain't, just keep living. It's coming your way. I'm going to go pray for all of them as well as myself. I'm going to pray for people's future. I'm going to pray for all these little children in here. Because I want them to do well. I want them to prosper. I want them to have what God has for them. I want them to be blessed. I don't want them strung out on drugs, alcohol. I, I want them to be productive citizens of the United States of America. That's what I want. Godly citizens. And the only way that's going to happen is we get on our knees and ask God to do that. If you are a real parent, you don't want your children to fail. You want your children to be blessed. You want your children to have a bright future. Your grandchildren. God knows I love my grandchildren. I want them to have. Ten times better. Than I ever had. But that also comes with ten times more problems. So God not my will but yours be done. In their lives. I thank y'all for listening this morning. The. The invitation was given at the beginning, but just in case you wasn't in here, Jesus gave his life on Calvary for every one of us that we might have a right to eternal life. What he said was, and what the word says is, if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, the Bible says that thou shalt be saved because with the mouth confession is made, but with the heart we believe. This morning, if that is calling you to make a difference and to make a change, I invite you to the altar. Come and join me as I pray. And if you, we're going to the water anyway. I'm going to get wet today. Praise God. Why don't you come on and get wet with me? And we'll get your heart right. Not in the water, but before you get to the water. Because see, all that water is is wet. That is an outward confession to an inward change. We do that because he said, believe and be baptized. And that's what we do. God bless you this morning. Heaven smile upon you is our prayer. As we stand, the invitation is given. Come and join me at the altar. Change.